peace of mind 24 hours a day. Call now. Feel the heat. Feel the power. Feel the fire. Major League Soccer is on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8, the new home of the Chicago Fire. The Fire hosts the Kansas City Wizards today at 2 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. You can be free to live your life and still manage your diabetes with freestyle blood glucose meters. And right now, you can get a free meter and starter test strips just by calling. With the latest freestyle meters, there's no inconvenient coding. Just give the world's smallest blood sample to get the results you need. Call for a freestyle meter that fits your life. Like the new freestyle Freedom Light meter. Easy to read and use so you can live more freely. Call for your free meter today because freedom never goes out of style. We've got your ticket to the biggest summer films. Then, don't get too cocky. Celebrity Expose, followed by Paradise Hotel 2. Viewer discretion advised. Monday, starting at 7 on My 50 Chicago. Good afternoon and welcome to Perspective, a show that focuses on important issues in your community. I'm your host, Monique Carradine. Youth on youth violence is an epidemic that's left the Chicago public school system struggling for answers. More than 20 CPS students have died so far this school year, and most of them have been victims of gun violence. Now, Chicago public school students are fighting back, trying to reclaim their schools and their classrooms by organizing peace rallies and lobbying lawmakers in Springfield for tougher gun laws. Joining us today is Chicago Board of Education President Rufus Williams. Rufus, thanks for being with us today. You have a, a, a tragic and very complicated problem on your hands here. What are some solutions that you and your colleagues at CPS are looking at to handle this problem of violence? You know, Monique, this is a very difficult situation. And we noticed last year, this started to peak. And what's really happening is any time a child between the ages of four and 19 is harmed within the city limits, they're very likely a Chicago public school student. We insist, and it is a fact, that our schools are safe. These issues don't take place in our schools. They take place against our students in the street. What we know is that they don't take place during school hours. They take place after school. They take place on weekends. It takes place, you know, the mayor's curfew was good. Uh, it's kind of shortened some of the time in which children should be out. But those aren't, the problem is we need our children in school more. We think that we can do more with them. We think they're safe when they're there. If we can have a way to have them there longer, then we can really help to eradicate but a lot of this issue. There have been some incidents that have happened on school grounds. Uh, Crane High School just a, a few weeks ago had an incident where a student was killed on school grounds. Yes. Uh, and we can, we can name, you know, probably dozens of fights that happen on school grounds that could easily escalate into something more tragic than just injuries. So there is obviously a school safety issue well, inside the schools, is there not? Yeah, well, I'll accept that uh, we, have, we have had two, incident, two incidences on school grounds, Crane and Simeon. In both of those cases, those were still outside of the school. So inside our schools are safe. Inside of our schools, it's not an issue. I think what you find is that if you're looking for someone, if there has been a conflict, then the school is the place where you likely will find that person. And that's where, unfortunately, those things are being worked out. What we really have to have is a better way to have respect for one another, respect for life, and truly a way to resolve conflict that doesn't currently exist. And those things have to happen very early. What we know, this is a societal issue. What we know now is that we have generations that have generations of poverty, generations of gang membership, generations of dealing with things where you're trying to find respect and respect is found in this day and age, unfortunately, at the wrong end of a gun. So then does that mean that we have to begin to teach children in school, and I, and I read this one place, how to deal with violence, what, how, to, how to react when a shooting occurs? You know, are these the kinds of things that have to be infused into the curriculum to help kids handle this? Because children, quite frankly, are afraid now. I will say that we need to make sure that we teach children this. The schools take on a lot of responsibility because the school very often is that one pillar in the community. The school and the church are the places that people are that are long standing in our communities. The fact of the matter is we need to have our children for more time. If we have them for more time, we can teach them more things. One of the things that we truly struggle with is what is the role of the school? 
quite frankly, we should be teaching children, we should be teaching them educational components. We should be educating children. You should. But where we are is we provide breakfast, we provide lunch, we provide in many cases nurturing, which is beyond where we should really consider schools. And so what we should have is really a community reach out, a community embrace. Mm -hmm. All the people in the community, all the agencies, should do what they do. And, and But you just said that kids need to be in school for longer periods of time. So if you keep kids in school longer, then you are forced to begin to deal with things other than just academic issues, are you not? Absolutely, because then we have time to do that. Monique, we currently have the shortest school day and the shortest school year of the largest school districts in the nation. So just in trying to get our children to the place that they can read, that they can write, that they can communicate in effective ways to be successful in life, to teach them science, to teach them history. We only have five and a half hours a day to do that. So in trying to layer in the other things, we will miss some of the things that we know are critically important to getting them ready for life. Now I will tell you, we have to teach them these things now because right now our children are frightened, our teachers are frightened, our community is frightened, and it's very difficult to teach a child when a child is in that condition. Absolutely. And certainly it's impossible to teach them if they're dead. We can't expect that children at Simeon or children at Crane or children at Julian or many of the other schools where their peers have been affected to be able to go in the next day and sit down and engage themselves in algebra and geometry. It's not realistic. It's not realistic at all. So what needs to happen? Is this an issue that lawmakers need to take on to get more funding so that we can have those longer school days? Do parents need to put pressure on policymakers? What needs to happen? Because we've talked over and over about the problems. It is high time we start talking solutions. We go every year, unfortunately, to Springfield to lobby for a change in the school funding formula to get more money into our Chicago public schools. We absolutely need that. We need our lawmakers to take that on. We need them to bring more money into Chicago public schools. We need parents and voters to really push that effort. We have had 16 busloads of children from 16 schools going down to Springfield to push that agenda amongst our, our lawmakers to help them appreciate that these are the faces of the children that we're talking about that can really benefit from this. So absolutely, that is what that is in fact what we need. This is being called an American nightmare. We're seeing overall crime levels in Chicago going down, but among students, the level is going up. We even know, based on statistics, that the death rate of kids dying from gun violence may even exceed last year's staggering death toll of 34. What can parents and students do right now today? First and foremost, I think parents need to know where their children are. They need to know what their children are doing, and they need to know what they're inclined to do. Every time a child is shot, there is a shooter and there is a victim. And we've lost two children, at least, in that process. So whether your, children is a, whether your child is a victim or whether your child is a perpetrator, you need to know where they are and know what they're doing and know what they're inclined to do. And if you need help in managing through the process, we know adolescents have a, a free spirit. We need to get them there. So we need parents to really step in and take control of the children. Okay. Thanks so much for being with us. Coming up next on Perspective Peers, Inspiring Peers, we'll tell you about a national organization that's dedicated 35 years to promoting positive values for at-risk youth. There are three good reasons why you should get off the couch and call the Cooking and Hospitality Institute of Chicago. One, they'll send you free information about the world famous Le Cordon Bleu culinary program. Two, they can help prepare you for an exciting career as a chef, pastry chef, caterer, or more. Three, it can open the door for the kind of future you've always wanted. Call now for a free brochure. Operators are standing by for a free brochure. Call the Cooking and Hospitality Institute of Chicago at 800-689-4101. Call now. If you haven't called yet, what are you waiting for? Call now to find out about a culinary career like the one you just saw. It's all here in this free Hot Culinary Careers and How to Get One Guide. It's got details on today's in-demand jobs. Call the Cooking and Hospitality Institute of Chicago to find out how to get your free culinary career guide. Operators are standing by. Call 800-689-4101. 800-689-4101. My boy loves motorcycles, just like his dad. First things first, motorcycle safety. When I got hit, at least I knew who to call. The Law Tigers. Here it is. 
This card is as important as his safety gear. I've been carrying a Law Tigers card for years, and I want him to have one too. With the Law Tigers, you never ride alone. Get your free biker benefit card at your favorite motorcycle shop or online at lawtigers.com. Chicagoland's injury lawyers who ride. Lakewood Homes presents new homes from the 160s in an exciting clubhouse community. A great value and a great location west of Schaumburg in Hampshire. Take advantage of historically low prices today. Lakewood relies on the landscaping experience of Countryside Industries, brick and stone installation by Dason Masonry, and exterior building products supplied by your local off-site supply center. Homes from the 160s west of Schaumburg in Hampshire. For a brochure, call Lakewood Homes at 800-477-8585. Welcome back to Perspective. We're talking about empowering young people to solve their problems in more positive ways. Joining us right now is Victor Dixon from Life Directions, a national organization that teaches at-risk youth to break the cycle of violence. Now, Victor, Life Directions has been around since the 1970s. Have you noticed any progress in your efforts to help kids deal more productively with violence? Well, Monique, uh, over the years, we've had thousands of children that have come through our program in the cities that we operate in. And those children have been impacted in very positive ways. Uh, among the children in our program, we've never had an incidence of violence. Uh, we've had some tremendous results with life directions, impacting things like truancy, impacting even math and reading scores. Because as you know, if, if kids learn to value life, they value their own lives, then they'll want to go to school. They have a reason for going to school. So how do kids come in contact with you? Because right now, again, we're in a crisis situation here in Chicago. Yes. As I mentioned, crime overall is down. Crime among youth is up. So this is where we really need an organization like yours. How do kids and families find Life Directions? Well, right now, Life Directions operates in three high schools in the Chicago area. We've been in Chicago for 18 years. Only three? Only three, and, and principally it's a funding issue, as uh, many uh, not-for-profits are struggling in a, in a difficult economy, when the tax base is down. That uh, word funding tends yes, to come up it, a lot, uh, especially it, it comes up when you need the money the most, unfortunately. Absolutely, and this is the time where a program life direction, like Life Directions really should be expanded. Uh, how we get in, in contact with, with students is we, in the schools we work with, we work with the principals and the teachers to identify those most at-risk students. And then we have a three-phase program we do one program in the school where we teach achieving students how to mentor underachieving students and those that are at most risk of, of really falling through the cracks in the system. And describe that student to me, the one that's more at risk of falling through the cracks. What's the profile? Well, we, we look at uh, issues like truancy. We look at things like the students who've had a, kind of a history of trouble in the schools who have difficulty with interpersonal issues with other students. Um, a lot of the, the students that we deal with are dealing with anger, they're dealing with bitterness and resentment. Many of them are abused mm -hmm. themselves, they're abandoned. Uh, they don't have the kind of parenting that you and I might have had uh, in, in decades <laughs> gone by. So they're dealing with those issues and they don't know how to deal with the things that, that they're faced with in their lives. And, and unfortunately, they result to violence as almost a solution for their problems. So what we try and do is, is really instill the kind of values in them that they may not be getting at home, or they may not be connected with the church, they may not be getting it at school. And, and that's understandable, but then comes another component. You have to help the folks at home, because eventually those kids have to go back home. So don't you at some point have to bring the parents and the family members in so that they can begin to utilize those same tools? Absolutely. I, I mentioned that we have an intergenerational program. We have three parts to that program. The one part is in school, secondly is after school, and the last component is in the community. Well, we try and engage principally uh, 18 to 35 year old adults in mentoring these young people as well. But we also reach out to grandparents and others because many of these young people have almost uh, been disconnected 
from the other generations. And mm. so they don't have the kind of influences where you may, or I may have had a grandmother that told you, you know, that, hey, you know, fighting is not the way to solve the problem. They don't have those kind of voices speaking into their lives. What about success stories? Tell me about some of them. Wow, just, just here in Chicago, one of the success stories uh, that we've been talking about, we're in Marshall High School, Farragut, Community Links, and we work with the surrounding feeder grade schools as well. In Marshall, we were uh, invited to come in and help with truancy uh, problems. We, we've seen in one year a 71% reduction in truancy among the students that we work with. In a number of the schools, we've seen math and reading scores go up as much as 80% among the school students that participate in our program. And once again, what you're doing is you, you're building the foundation, their value of their own life, their ability to deal with conflicts in more positive ways, to deal with their anger and their frustration in more positive ways. And I was also reading that another thing that you really teach is the value of forgiveness, and that's huge. Yes, our, our slogan for our program that operates in the schools is peers inspiring peers through forgiveness. I mean, it seems like a, a very simple thing, but in our society, the socialization right now is that revenge is what happens, mm -hmm. not forgiveness. I mean, it, it seems like the most basic of values, but it's something that's not really being taught, is not perpetuated in the movies and in the music and uh, uh, in, in video games. I mean, there's nothing about forgiveness being taught in any of those Nowhere. things. Nowhere. <laughs> so That's, we have yeah. to step in and we mm -hmm. have to do it. If they're not getting it from parents, then someone has to do it, and that's what Life Directions is all about. In the minute or less that we have left, let's talk about how you are working to get more funding so we can see you in more schools. Well, we're hoping that just appearing here on this program helps. Hopefully there's someone out there that's watching, uh, a corporate leader or some other official that could help us uh, build the funding. We do work on grants. We have a grant right now from the Chicago Community Trust uh, that we just received, and we have other grants around the country. But uh, we look, we do get support, some sp support from the Chicago Public Schools. We've had federal earmarks, state earmarks, but the corporate funding is really the key. Um, unfortunately, as you know, Chicago, a lot of corporations, headquarters have moved and the funding is kind of dried up. That's making it very difficult. Well, good luck to you, and thanks for being here today. Well, Monique, thank you so much for having My me. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Coming up next on Perspective, Defying the Odds, how Gary, Indiana is trying to change its reputation as a crime-ridden city. Cambridge Homes. When I think of Cambridge Lakes, I think of fun. The community is just so friendly and it's just the, such a fun place to be. It feels like we're on vacation. It's almost like a resort because you've got your community center, you've got your walking pass. Cambridge has something for everyone. We've been here for a long time. This is more than we could yeah. have dreamed of. Cambridge features land surveying by Midwest Technical Consultants and road construction by Orange Crush LLC. For a free brochure, call 800-935-6060. Walgreens and Fox Chicago want you to support your school. Just go to foxhighlightschicago.com and click on Sandra's School Shoutout. There you can vote for one of the featured high schools of the week. Then every Friday, Sandra Solarte on Good Day Chicago will feature the school with the most votes. So be heard, make a difference, and vote for Sandra's School Shoutout. Walgreens, a proud sponsor of the IHSA's Do What's Right Sportsmanship Program. Here are three good reasons why you should get off the couch and call the Cooking and Hospitality Institute of Chicago. One, they'll send you free information about the world famous Le Cordon Bleu culinary program. Two, they can help prepare you for an exciting career as a chef, pastry chef, caterer, or more. Three, it can open the door for the kind of future you've always wanted. Call now for a free brochure. Operators are standing by for a free brochure. Call the Cooking and Hospitality Institute of Chicago at 800-689-4101. Call now. If you haven't called yet, what are you waiting for? Call now to find out about a culinary career like the one you just saw. It's all here in this free Hot Culinary Careers and How to Get One Guide. It's got details on today's in-demand jobs. Call the Cooking and Hospitality Institute of Chicago to find out how to get your free culinary career guide. Operators are standing by. Call 800-689-4101. 800-689-4101. Feel the heat. 
Feel the power. Feel the fire. Major League Soccer is on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8, the new home of the Chicago Fire. The Fire hosts the Kansas City Wizards today at 2 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. Monday morning, warm weather returns, but not without rain. I'll tell you what you can expect for your work week. How the rising cost of fuel is changing what your child eats at school. Monday morning on Good Day Chicago. Well, if you mention Gary, Indiana to people, Michael Jackson might come to mind, but unfortunately, so does poverty, unemployment, and crime. The city has had a hard time shaking its bad rap since the fall of the steel industry in the 1960s. Joining us now is Lawrence Wright, interim police chief for the Gary Police Department. Chief, welcome to the program. Thank you. Gary has quite a few challenges on its hands. You're dealing with this image of being the crime capital of the nation. You're dealing with police corruption and all the other things that I mentioned. What are you doing to help the city overcome some of those problems? Well, we have several initiatives that we are actively pursuing. We've got an initiative to reduce youth violence because unfortunately we feel and have felt for a long time that the constant loss of young men from our community through acts of violence, I mean, it just depletes us in ways that there's no possible answer to this. But through the fact that we've joined with other organizations like the Boys and Girls Clubs, our local hospital, our local mental health center, and many other organizations. We feel that we can get a grip on this and do some of the things that we saw implemented in other places. We've adopted the uh, California Wellness Initiative Program and feel that if we actively pursue some of these initiatives, that we can make some serious changes in the culture that provides for the kind of people who turn out to be violent. How long have these initiatives been in place and the partnerships that you now have with the various community organizations? Actually, we've actively been pursuing them for six months. Okay. You know, th and these were things that I, as, in my former position as commander, I was overseeing and I'm going to continue because I think in the long run, what really changes Gary's image is to change the culture which allows for the kind of negative press that we've been getting. I, I guess one question that residents in Gary might have is why has it taken so long for these kinds of partnerships to be put in place when the problems have gone on for many years? Well, I can't answer that in a way that will probably make sense to a lot of people, but I'll say this. When I ascended to the position of commander, one of the things that I thought was necessary was to look at the city in, in a way that we can guarantee not only safety of people, but guarantee that the quality of life of people is affected positively. And I know that organizations that have been effective in doing this have adopted policies and programs where they met the citizens where they live and they not only address those immediate criminal actions, but they address those other more underlying tones of problems. Sure. Okay. If you've got a community where you've got young men who want to congregate on the street corners, and a lot of them may be juveniles, but we can enforce curfew laws. That's one way to approach it. Mm -hmm. But it's better if you can find some place to take these young men, mentor them, get them in contact with somebody who's a positive role model and give them a view of life which says that you can spend your activity time doing something that's not only going to benefit you in the long run but it's going to benefit the community at large. But don't you feel that there is a need to, to first rebuild the trust? I mean, the police department itself has faced its share of problems. One of the reasons why you're the interim chief now, because the former um, chief has been indicted. And, and so how do you rebuild the trust so that when you go to those street corners to tell those young men to move or to take them someplace where they can congregate, that they will trust you? How do you rebuild the trust? Well. I agree, There's, there, there are probably going to be a small portion of the population who thinks that because of what they've seen on the news, this is endemic of the whole organization. Fundamentally, we've never stopped doing our jobs day in and day out. Now, 
what we have to do, first and foremost, is not only do what we were supposed to do as police officers, you know, and respond to situations in a professional, in a way that gives people the understanding that we're committed to, you know, helping them, you know, solve those quality of life issues, because that's what they are. You know, anytime that you're afraid to be in your home, that's a quality of life issue. Absolutely. Anytime you're afraid to walk out your door to go down to the corner, that's a quality of life issue. Anytime you can't sell your property because you allegedly live in a bad neighborhood, this is a quality of life issue. We have to address those issues in a serious way daily, and we have to let citizens know that. But we have to continue the partnerships. We have to continue to talk to people. What professional police officers do more often than not instead of waiting for the radio to call us and tell us that there's a problem at any particular location if you make contact with citizens and you have a dialogue going on they're likely to inform you about what's going on in their neighborhoods okay and sometimes now, not well, for fear of retaliation depending uh, upon how skillful the police officer is because okay. that's how you judge okay okay, okay? You're right. Some people they're not going to talk to. But if you are a professional in this business and you go about this in the proper way, sooner or later you're going to develop relationships with people. And that's how you get trust. You've been working for six months, as you said earlier, with mm -hmm. the various organizations in the community to help mm -hmm. solve some of these problems. What are your three main goals that you would like to achieve? If you can outline them in the minute that we have left, what are the three main things that you would like to see change, positive change? in the city of Gary, Indiana? Well, I think that first and foremost, I'd like to see a reduction in youth violence. Okay. Uh, I honestly do not believe that we should spend our time looking at all the negative numbers that we've had in the past. Secondly, I'd like to see activities like we've uh, set up for safe havens and mentoring programs so that there's a positive interaction among children. I'm going to have to stop you right there and I'll share the third point with our audience on our blog, which I'll tell you about in just a second. We'll have okay. some final thoughts and how you can contribute to our program after a quick break. Stay with us. driving record precede you? Safe Auto understands. So if you need state required car insurance, don't worry. We're not afraid. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. Play it safe. Good job, honey. Return. Compared to other body shops, Mako is 33% less with 0% financing available. You can be free to live your life and still manage your diabetes with freestyle blood glucose meters. And right now, you can get a free meter and starter test strips just by calling. With the latest freestyle meters, there's no inconvenient coding. Just give the world's smallest blood sample to get the results you need. Call for a freestyle meter that fits your life. Like the new Freestyle Freedom Light Meter. Easy to read and use so you can live more freely. Call for your free meter today because freedom never goes out of style. Did you hear that? It's our first night in the new house. Do you want me to check? Okay. I saw a guy trying to break in. Hello? This is Andy from Brinks Home Security. Are you all right? My husband saw someone try to break in. I'm sending help right now. Call 1-800-403-3150 now to blanket your home with protection from Brinks Home Security and install a personalized system for just $99. Inside, Brinks delivers peace of mind to you and your family with state-of-the-art sensors and detectors engineered to help protect and alert. Brinks Home Security, dedicated to rapid response and peace of mind 24 hours a day. Call now. A special thank you to all of our guests today, and don't forget to visit our blog, MyVoiceChicago.com. I'm Monique Carradine. We'll see you next week. Mom! If Grandma says you're good, we're all going for Reese's Sundays at Baskin Robbins. These little angels? I'll get my coat.
Reese's Sundays and Shakes. It's candy bar madness at Pastor Robbins. Yay! A father's absence has a serious effect on a child. Studies show fatherless children are twice as likely to drop out of school and 11 times more likely to exhibit violent behavior. I'm Jeffrey Loving. I'm an attorney who concentrates in protecting fathers' rights. Fathers know your rights and know that visitation interference is now a crime in Illinois. To learn more about your rights as a father, call 312-356-DADS. Tired of paying too much for glasses? Come to VisionWorks Grand Opening Sale and get two complete pair of stylish glasses for just $99. For a limited time, get our lowest prices ever on no-line bifocals. Two complete pair for $149. VisionWorks, why pay more? Next Celebrity Exposé, Summer Blockbusters. We've got your ticket to the biggest summer films. I like that. And the hottest Hollywood action. Then, it's the World Series of Paradise. Casino Royale, baby. The stakes have never been higher. Wow, look at all that money. Oh, which players will go all in? Don't get too cocky. Celebrity Exposé, followed by Paradise Hotel 2. Viewer discretion advised. Monday, starting at 7 on 